This meeting is being recorded. Oh, there's oh, there's okay. Hello. Welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission's public meeting on Thursday. Oh, I'm getting an echo back. Does somebody have their mic on? Sure I am. Muted. Yeah, if you're not muted, it comes back around. Hetty, you too? Okay, I'm going to start over. Welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission's public meeting on Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Based on Governor Baker's executive law, suspend, executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this meeting is still being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Janet Marquardt, and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken. I'll now take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. As you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer, and then please place yourselves back on mute. Patricia Oss. Present. Robin Fordham. Present. Hetty Startup. Present. Rebecca Lockwood. Present. Madeline Helmer. Present. And I am here. Uh, opportunity for public comment and questions will be provided during the general public comment period later in the agenda. And I would just like to start by introducing Madeline Helmer, whose name you all heard. Um, she has come to us to join the commission. Uh, would you like to tell a little bit about yourself or do you want me to just say things off your application? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'll speak to that. Um, I am a architectural historian and preservation planner. Um, and I just moved to Amherst a year ago. So um, from Philadelphia, but I grew up in Vermont. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to join. Thank you. She's worked on preservation plans, folks. <laughs> She's going to show us all up. Okay, um, I would just like to remind people that you, I hope you prepared all the materials. I'm going to limit presentations by outsiders to very short statements. Um, so please know the material always before and anyone who's listening ready to come in, we're, we're really asking you to keep your remarks very short because we will have read the materials you sent ahead. Um, so we'll start um, our public meeting with CPA proposal discussions. Um, some of these are people who have proposals ready and want to talk to us about them. Other ones are people who are just thinking about it and want advice about how or whether they might prepare one. So um, Ben, who's first up? Uh, that would be Susanna. Has she managed to call in? Yes. I know she is away at this point. There she is. Hi, Susanna. You are muted. Can you unmute her, Ben? No, I can only. Uh, yeah. Hi. There she is. I think I'm in. Thank you. Hi. Sure. So can you briefly introduce your project to the rest of the commission? I Just to tell everybody, I already met with her to talk about this and now she's bringing the idea to the rest of you. Yes, um, I'm here today to float an idea for a uh, self-guided walking tour in downtown to join the others. Uh, this would be a tour of stained glass in the downtown. And uh, if you'll bear with me, I'd like to take you on a little virtual tour of Amherst Stained Glass. Uh, this one, this idea came to me because I've been helping a man who's writing a book about stained glass in Grace Church that'll be out in December. And it got me thinking about other stained glass. So proceeding in chronological order, the uh, logical place to begin would be at the Mead Art Museum at Amherst College. They have a room from a 17th century English manor house 
and they've installed in the windows in that room a bunch of glass panels, maybe a dozen or so from different European countries of the 16th and 17th centuries. Some are religious scenes like the saint here. Um, others are armorial. And there are also a lot of um, pictures of sailing ships of one kind and another. Uh, so this would show what was going on in stained glass in Europe at the time that the very first Europeans were setting foot on um, American, well, Massachusetts soil. So the next stop would be, chronologically, would be at Grace Church. Grace has recently found documentary evidence that it has 20 windows by the man who's known as the father of American stained glass. His name is William Gibson. He was a Scot. He came to America and opened the first stained glass workshop in America in New York City in 1830. He was very successful. They, the firm did windows in a lot of churches, particularly in the South up until the Civil War, which brought a halt to that business. Um, they did a, this suite of windows for Grace Church in 1865 when it opened. I'm showing you just a couple of details. The one on the left shows the kind of really um, finicky grisaille work that, that Gibson was known for. This is a technique that's found in Gothic churches in Europe where you use black paint on white glass to do these small, um, very tight little designs. And from a distance, it looks gray. So the word grisaille comes from the French word for gray. Um, and this panel on the left shows some of his other special techniques. I'm not going to take the time to describe those, but they're sufficiently distinctive that we hope when this book comes out, there will be other Gibson windows discovered. On the right, you see one of his paintings. He's painting in vitreous enamel. So he's painting on glass. And then after he paints, the glass is fired a second time so that the paint becomes permanent. This is a, the prophet Abraham. There are many really beautiful paintings among what uh, those windows at Grace Church. Um, what happened is that fashions changed. And at the end of the 19th century, people got rid of their Gibson windows because other kinds of stained glass, which we'll see in a minute, uh, came into popularity. And it turns out, as far as we can tell, that Grace Church has the only surviving set of Gibson windows in the country, in the world. And so it is something of a national treasure. It's a very important discovery. Grace has some windows that are not by Gibson. Uh, the big circular window that is in the west facade facing the common is by the British, the London firm of Clayton and Bell. It shows Saint, uh, the Archangel Michael uh, spearing a dragon. You can see the dragon there on his back under uh, St. Michael's foot. And this window is very popular with our younger visitors. <laughs> they really like the dragon being killed. Um, this window is later. It's one of a pair that honors George Kendrick, the man who gave the town of Amherst Kendrick Park. It's done in a completely different style. This is more like what you would see at Chartres or Canterbury cathedrals in Europe small panes of very dark, very intensely colored glass and much less painting than on the Gibson windows. You all probably recognize the beautiful Tiffany window from the Unitarian Meeting House. Um, Tiffany, it, Tiffany's big innovation was to use opalescent glass and to mount it in layers so that you see the color coming through from one panel of glass into another and get these wonderful atmospheric effects. Um, 
the Tiffany windows, well, this one was restored with CPA funds a few years ago, and they made a video at the time. So you have good documentation of what, how Tiffany made the windows, but also a nice opportunity to bring in information about the importance of preservation and conservation, how it was conserved. Um, a lot of the Queen Anne Victorian houses in the town center area have what's called cathedral glass windows. I'm showing you the window in my house because I happen to have a photo of this window lit from the inside but there are other grander windows around. I just don't have interior photos of them. Um, cathedral glass is basically plain colored textured glass that's leaded together to make these patterns. Um, it doesn't have any of the painting on it. It was a way that the middle class could afford stained glass and they would often put these windows in the main stair hall so that when you walk through the front door, you saw the great splash of color and you were very impressed at the house you visited or the cathedral glass might be in the door itself or in the surround around the door. Um, I don't think these private houses might want to be actual stops on the tour, but I think information about this could be in the related materials and it is rather fun to go around town and uh, look for these windows. St. Bridget's is 1925, that, that church building, and they had a set of windows done by the Franz Meyer studio in Munich, which was a very big operation employing about 300 glassmakers. Um, they did a series of windows, mostly showing scenes from the life of Christ, and they're all over this country and all over Europe. Um, St. Bridget's made a video about its windows for its 150th anniversary, so that's also available as source material. And that brings us into the 20th century, and for the 21st century, Ben, ben Brager pointed out to me this window by Mark Ricker that's in Amherst Town Hall. This is just a small detail, it's a much bigger window but it's the only photograph I was able to lay my hands on. Um, and I think it would be a nice way to end up by pointing out that Amherst is a very arts friendly town and that we support artists in a lot of different media. This one was um, a, uh, a Public Arts Commission award and was funded by the Cultural Council and matching private donations. So it would be a good place to make a pitch for how important these public-private partnerships are in making sure that some of this beautiful art gets put in public places where we all can enjoy it. So I'm gonna stop there. And if you have questions, I'd be glad to answer them. I just wanna say one thing, I am not looking to be in charge of this project. I really want to put the idea out there and hope that, um, that I can interest others of you in um, taking the project on. I, um, I don't have space in my life to do something this ambitious, but I think it's a great idea and I really hope it can come to pass. Thank you, Susanna. Okay, we have a question from Robin, and then Becky, you had your hand up. Um, are you no? Okay, so Robin. Hi there. Um, what a wonderful idea and project. Um, I'm very much in support of the idea of this project. I'm not sure if we're discussing. Are we discussing it under the idea of it being CPA funded? Yeah. Um, okay. And that. And that oh, I, go ahead. Uh, she's thinking that it may need something like a grad student to do the research, and then it would need whatever kind of marketing um, for the, you know, visitor center, whatever we did, however we put it out there. So the first thing I would say um, is that I know that uh, I'm just going to speak to this in, in the present and going and going into the future that CPA funds do not 
uh, walking tour or interpretation is not covered under eligibility to start preservation. So there's no preservation activity going on. That said, this would be a fabulous project for the Mass, uh, the Amherst Cultural Council, which I understand, I think is uh, just about to come up into its grant cycle. And um, certainly the Historical Commission, if members were agreed, could write a letter in support of this idea, this project. I think it's a really wonderful one, but um, it would not fall under the eligibility requirements for CPA unless I'm mistaken somehow. Uh, my understanding was that the Riders Walk, although it's a long time ago, fell under it simply because it's a way of encouraging people to um, value and therefore preserve things in the town that are worthwhile, historical things. That doesn't count anymore? Um, I think maybe I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I wasn't on the council, uh, on the commission at that point or the committee. But no, um, my understanding that, yeah, my understanding was that that was a stretch and that it maybe mm -hmm. should have been funded through something like um, the, the Amherst Cultural Council as well. It doesn't, it doesn't, promoting an idea of preservation is not, it's pretty clear from the DOR guidelines that that's not an eligible expense. But like I said, it, it's wonderful that we've had this presentation in front of the commission and we can certainly write uh, a, a brief letter and support and I, I would volunteer for that. <laughs> um, if some, if, if they, if someone has, I mean, we don't have a head, head for the project at this point, but if they were to apply to the um, cultural council, council I, would, I would be very in favor of that. Yeah, I um, put out a query to some faculty um, who teach um, either architecture or um, medievalism, modern medieval revival. Um, <clears throat> and one expressed some interest. I didn't hear back from the other two, but of course it's hard because the money wouldn't come in until next year. So we don't know which graduate students would be around who would be available. The faculty don't know what their load is, whether they'll you know, be on sabbatical or here. So it's kind of hard for people to uh, agree that they want to take on the project, but I think we can probably find a faculty sponsor if we can identify a student. Um, also, I had suggested Susanna she consider um, possibly expanding it to be not just stained glass, but also uh, medieval revival buildings that we have in the town. So we have, you know, Bridget is Neo Romanesque, the town hall is Neo Romanesque, we have some Neo English Gothic churches. Um, so there would be an opportunity to. Um, thicken, if you will, the tour a bit with not only the building that the stained glass is in, but just some of the other buildings that people could see as they walked around and talk a little bit about why um, Neo-Gothic or Neo-Romanesque for that matter was um, prevalent in America from the late 19th century through the early 20th century. Um, and the other thing I um, mentioned to her is that if we wanna save costs and we wanna get more of these tours, you know, lined up on the rack cards as options for people to take and then use their phone to access a web page. We could do them pretty inexpensively by just creating a website for each of these with information and then a, a map like we did for the writer's walk that would lead people from one to the other. And then the things that couldn't be covered like the private homes would just be pictured um, with information so that no one would try to actually visit them. But um, it would be something that we would still need the research, but we wouldn't be like putting up signs or, you know, designing uh, all sorts of fancy bells and whistles. It would just be literally a rat card with a website address and a little map on it. Um, so those are some yeah. thoughts that we had. And yeah, I mean, I, I, sir, I um, administered Greenfield um, uh, Cultural Council for a couple of years, and it sounds like the perfect it's really the perfect project for um, that uh, that particular funding instrument. And you know, as long as you identify that you are hiring a consultant, and I think you have to identify the consultant in the beginning. The payments don't you know go out until you incur the expense anyway. So um, if you could get a faculty sponsor to put a proposal together, and they were willing to you know try to try to pull it off within the next year, it, it could be um, the, a request for funding could go in in this grant mm -hmm. cycle. Susanna, you have your hand up. Yeah, I think I think having um, 
a website somewhere it would be particularly important with this because not all of these stained glass windows are easy to see from the inside all the time. I mean, they're all publicly accessible except for the private homes um, at some point, but not all the time, 24 seven. So uh, to have great photography from the inside uh, would really make it come alive. Right. And I then think maybe a lot there, of that photography exists. It's just a matter of making it um, accessible. Right. Maybe we wouldn't have the same amount of requirement for public um, that the CPA requires. I don't know what I right. would do. Becky, you have your hand up. You're muted, Becky. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to say I think it's a great idea, Susanna. Um, I'm just trying to clarify if I are you asking. I mean, we're giving information. I think going to the cultural council is a great idea. You're, I'm, I'm not clear. It feels like kind of maybe you're asking us to take it on. Um, and I just want to be clear about that. Well, I would love and it. <laughs> I would love it if you wanted to take it on. But if you don't want to take it on, I would love it if you talked it up to somebody else who might want to take it on, some other group. It's just I can't take this on. I'm about to turn 80 and I've got a very full plate and it's more than I can do. I, I'm happy to share what I know and the, you know, the, the resources that I know are out there but I just don't want to take on the management of the whole project. Okay, great, thank you. Anybody else have a comment on this? Pat, did you raise your hand? You're muted. Pat, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I think it's a wonderful project. And Jan, I, I agree with you about adding some architectural um, sites to, to flesh it out. Um, I, I certainly would support our supporting it to the Cultural Council, but I do agree that it's not something that we can do directly, but we certainly can support it in, in its, its uh, as, as a worthy project and in, in that the Cultural Council consider funding, whatever it takes to make it happen. Thanks. Okay, any other comments before we move on? Um, I, I propose we do write a letter to help with the Cultural Council application. And Robin, if you'd be willing to help um, maybe work with Susanna on putting together that proposal. She has a prospectus on this and um, there are some secondary sources. So maybe, um, get that from her and help her put that together. And then we can try and identify someone, in, possibly at UMass, the person that I'll be replacing who's on, gonna be on sabbatical, she was the person who seemed interested, but the timing is what's up in the air. So it may be that spring when I'm there, I could start it, she could pick it up the following year, you know, just in order to have a sponsor since you said we would have to have a name. Yeah, I mean, you'd want to be submitting something to uh, the grant um, uh, grant cycle with, you know, a specific point person who would, you know, essentially sure. carry the program through. Without that, it's, I mean, it's only, it's, I mean, right now it's an idea. Um, if it was an idea with, you know, somebody who was willing to take it to fruition, that would be one thing. But um, I would be hesitant to put much effort into a proposal if you don't have if, if the project doesn't have a specific um, point person for the duration of its completion. Well, if I had a written proposal, I think I could probably convince her, but it is like, we're at chicken and egg here. It's like- <laughs> Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So, yep. All right. That's, that's a different point. Well, yeah, then we could exchange an, an email today and see if, you know, if there's anything that, that could be done with. Yeah. So maybe- if you would help Susanna put something tighter together and she could get it off her plate by giving all the information and then we, you, you, maybe you and I could work together on writing a proposal or something. And um, I mean, well, we'll talk to the UMass faculty member and see how we could maybe make this happen. Yeah, I mean, I might, I could throw an email out to the um, Amherst Cultural Council tomorrow too, just to see what, 
what their requirements are specifically. So and I timing. Want to, I don't want to be putting up. Yeah, application. Yeah. You know, yeah. my, some, sometimes you just have to wait a year. That's okay. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, we'll have to just see what their their timing is. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. We're going to move on to the next item, but thank you for presenting this. Great idea. Thank you. Okay, um, Wildwood Cemetery has a building that needs some preservation work and they're going to write a CPA proposal. Ben, are they here to present? Okay. Rebecca, anyone else? Hi there. Hi. My name is it took my computer a little while to join. <laughs> Um, so I'm the general manager of Wildwood Cemetery, and I uh, sent you a lot of information. I've been working pretty hard on the application, and I it helped me to put those slides together just to bring my thoughts together. And I don't know whether I should go through them, if you've seen them, and I should just go straight to your thoughts. What would you prefer? Um, I think that we, I assume everyone has done their homework and we've seen them. Um, and Ben and uh, Madeline, and I actually visited um, the, on Tuesday, we went to the building. Yeah, I was sorry. I missed you. I had some people visiting, so I, 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 yeah, I couldn't we didn't, come out. We didn't want to interrupt, but we were, yeah. you know, we needed to kind of see it because it isn't so evident from the road. We didn't know. No, we no, um, no. So yeah, unless you have anything to add to what you already sent us, we can just go into questions if you like. Um, I guess I do have one slide that I want to add because I've heard more from Tamara Conde. Um, so, and we've tweaked her proposal as of, we've done this very quickly. So as you know, there's sort of three things going on. There's the roof, there's the brickwork that I would like to combine because they sort of go uh, hand in hand. But then we also have that uh, request for the money that you found um, that helps people uh, become historic sites. And um, so that's the that's the new slide that I have to share. Okay. Um, so I could, can I share my screen? Yeah, okay. that, that's separate from CPA, everybody. Yeah, so I'll just um, share this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the first few slides were about the cemetery. Oh, and of course the train is gonna go by right now. Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> I live on Railroad Street. <laughs> this is how appropriate often so okay um so you saw that you checked out the roof that's uh, an example of the the composite um you could you saw the brickwork um that was our total cpa request and we can uh i'll skip through to the new slide okay. so um what we're interested in doing is working with tamara to identify the historic monuments and she said she does this amazing catalog of identifying this, the date of the stone, the type of the stone. Um, she would help me with, you know, researching the people as well. Um, what I asked her to do was to include the house as part of the grounds. And so um, her proposal totals 25,000, but um, what we did was we said 900 monuments. We have over 3,000 and counting, um, but we know where the older sections are, so I think we could we could get it down to 900 that I would want her to look at, the house evaluation, and then assisting us with the historic registration, which I have started but have been told that it would be very good if I got an expert involved, so um, that's I think this will really help us with the process. Okay, great. Just to clarify for everyone, um, this was an idea that Ben had and realized that we have money already for these 
kinds of things. And so it wouldn't need to be a part of the proposal. Yeah. So um, this is, yeah, this is the first sort of second part. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's a first step to establish the site more securely. Yes. Uh, another thing I wanted to clarify that I didn't see in the proposal, and I might have just missed it, but I didn't see it now on the slides, is that the composite roofing material is not replacing real slate. What's on there right now are stamped tin shingles. Yes. So it's not yes. like they're taking away historic slate and replacing it with modern composite. No. It's not high quality stuff. Yeah, what's on there is multiple layers of stuff and none of it is in great shape. And uh, the tin is the top layer and I don't know when that dates from but uh, I like that that look, and and if they had slate, according to the Massachusetts Historic Site that has all the house information on it, um, they said that we had slate at some point. I don't know where they got that information, but this composite slate, even though it's more expensive, seemed to have the right look to me. Okay, great. Anyone have questions or comments for Rebecca? Hi, and I can, I can stop sharing. Should I stop sharing? So does that help? Yeah, why don't you back out of that so we can see you better. There and we go. everybody would use the hand raising so that we aren't all speaking at once. Okay, uh, Hetty. Hi, Rebecca. Nice to see you again. Hi. Um, since uh, I saw you at the UU Church. Um, I think this is a great idea. Um, I love that cemetery. I walk in it a lot. I've always been intrigued about the building. Um, and what's outside the building does give you some information about what's been going on inside. But I think this is a wonderful moment when you could create a map for the graveyard itself. Um, and I agree, include the the building itself because am I right in thinking that it served a kind of it was a place for services for burial services at some point I think that they had thought about it I haven't believe it or not so I'm approaching my fourth work year anniversary and I still haven't had time to delve into the historic documents that we have mm -hmm. um I haven't i I really want to read through all the minutes that I have written it. Some of them were written in Mabel Loomis Todd's hand. Um, it's just amazing. And I just haven't been able to do that yet. But um, I think at some point they thought about that. They also had plans for a whole separate chapel somewhere on the grounds. I have those architectural plans, but I don't know where they were intending to put that. I, um, I think, yeah. The, I mean, that that cemetery is really important to the history of Amherst. Yes. Um, plus the fact that the little pond at the bottom of the lane, as you walk up the from the main road from Strong Street, is the is the beginning of the Tan Brook. So it's it's sort of a very interesting spot to me historically in, in many ways. It's sort of um, for people, for landscape, for the whole issue of the history of how um, cemeteries change over time um, mm -hmm. in this country. And, and so I think the fact that you're there spearheading this is wonderful and um, you will get to all of those documents. Um, I, will, I, also, yes. I also noticed there were some really bad hornet's nests, like make sure that something is done to protect the building because it, it looks as though the, the, the nests were actually impacting the brickwork and maybe that's oh, from okay. far and I wasn't really seeing what I needed mm -hmm. to see but mm -hmm. yeah wonderful great anybody else have any comments oh, Becky I, I just want to I agree I everything Hetty said um it's an important historical research resource and uh you know, I, I think that the proposal is well, um, it's clear. Um, it, I love that you were trying with the roof to be historic with it. Um, that's really important. And mapping the graves, my goodness, what a wonderful project. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it is important. I think it meets the, the criteria for the grant. 
Thank you, Becky. Yeah, the CPA part um, is a big uh, grand total, and we have other many other proposals this term. Have you thought about splitting it into two years, where you would do half, ask for half now, and just you know let them know on the proposal that it's half, and then ask for the second half later in order to be more likely to get um, what you need. Yeah, I was hoping to hear from you about this. So uh, we could, the reason the roof and the brickwork is combined is that they could share the staging sure. and um, it does sort of work hand in hand, but they, they don't have to happen at the same time. That's my understanding from the two. So I would what have about, to find, sorry. About, well, I'm just thinking of you're redoing two chimneys entirely and two partially. Um, if you're not doing it when you're doing the roof, then you have the issue of flashing. Yeah. Um, so would the chimneys be part of the roof project or part of the brick tuck work, tuck, tuck pointing project? Uh, at this point, they're separate. The mason is separate from the roofer and they wanted to keep it that way. Um, so I'd have to find out from them how that would work if we were to split it into two mm -hmm. um, and it's possible that the mason he was incredible to talk to because he's very he does everything the old-fashioned way and wants to follow the right pattern um i think that's probably what we would do first i'd uh, but i'd have to talk to both of them to find out which one is more critical and which one makes sense to do first yeah it looked to me like you have so much leakage from the chimneys and the roof that if you tuck pointed the sides without doing that, they would just be impacted again. But that's yes. a novice looking at it, you know. Yes. Way. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, that's just something to consider just because, um, you know, the allocation isn't infinite and yeah. um, we know there'll be quite a few big ones this year. What would you suggest me shooting for? Like, what number would? be most reasonable? <laughs> well, I can't say. I would say at least half, I mean, just half it at least. You can't do it any lower. Ben, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, <clears throat> I hear what Rebecca's saying about the staging and needing to um, you know, yeah. combine things. That, that's similar to um, our thought process with the uh, Women's Club last women's year, club. Where, where they had, you know, two or multiple items that required staging so we you know supported them moving forward with, the, with that um yeah i mean i think it's you got to put your proposal forward and and you know if you have two <clears throat> excuse me two good quotes uh from you know local contractors and that you know the work is necessary and to preserve the building so i think you know you go you go forward and you know you know, sometimes the best strategy is to ask for more and or, or just ask for the full amount and see see what you end up with. So yeah, that's a good point. Maybe ask for everything, but plan for uh, fewer things at the beginning, you know, maybe knowing you have to come back next year and say, okay, you didn't give us all of it and we did this much, but um, but start out, yeah, maybe asking for the whole thing. Um, yeah. Robin, you have your hand up? Jan? Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. I was just going to weigh in on that. I was going to suggest um, exactly that, that um, if there are cost savings and or further damages to be pre prevented, I would lead with the full amount and um, maybe have as a backup um, documentation of, you know, if, if we were to do in this in two phases, this is what it would look like in two phases, assuming that if you did it in two phases, it would therefore be more expensive in the long haul, less expensive year to year. But to have to be able to have both those presentations ready for the CPA committee, I think would be very useful because it would give them an easy opportunity to choose between uh, the two numbers while at the same time stressing, particularly if there's historic fabric that's at risk, um, but also if there are cost savings stressing those factors so that um, both options could be weighed. Um, I think that would make for a good presentation. Great, yes, okay. Madeline, um, are you also gonna mention the asphalt swale when you talk? Is that yeah. what you ask you about that? 
Um, well, I, I was thinking of the, uh, the new building that we saw, you know, under construction. And um, I think when we visited, we were sort of curious how that would work on the site and in relationship to the, um, to the building itself. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know if we could have more information about um, the plans for that. Um, and yeah, and then the swale, the um, drainage on, on one side, just, we were just curious if, um, or I was curious how the, the drainage is working on site because it seems as though that there's that kind of pave and um, gutter system, well, just drainage on, on, at the base of the building and um, any information about just water infiltration in the basement and, and if that's been um, considered by contractors? Um, we are in the process of trying to change all of our drainage paths. Uh, so you might have seen up the hill, um, our ground superintendent put in a new um, new drain, which is going to send the water more towards uh, north of the new building. Um, so, and he's, we're also going to change the pavement a little bit uh, in front of the building. So I think that will stop a lot of the flow that happens. Um, we don't, the, the basement is very damp, but it doesn't have standing water. So we don't have a problem with that. Um, I can ask about uh, the drains right around the building. And then you asked about the new maintenance center that's going in. So that's being tucked into the hillside. Um, we have a donor that's giving money towards a memorial garden that's going uh, above up the hill and behind the columbarium, which we're having all native plants put in. So it'll be a pollinator garden. It should be lovely that there are going to be multiple holly trees planted uh, that will hopefully block the view of the roof of the maintenance center. And that's gonna be open to the public. We're hoping to use that space for uh, public events and private um, ceremonies as well. So we're hoping that um, in the end, we'll have it shielded pretty, pretty well. Yeah. Thank you, both of you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Well, does that give you some information from us that? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think so. Would it be okay to reach out to you once I have this sort of broken down into options just to get another set of eyes looking at it? Sure. Yeah, okay. And then can I say that you I have your approval, your blessing of this? It comes to us as part of the CPA section that relates to historic preservation. Oh, and okay. We prioritize all of the applications that fall under our purview. Okay. So um, it, we'll, it, will, it will happen automatically in our prioritization and our comments and our rep, who is Robin Fordham, who just um, told you some things, she yes. will be taking all of them with our comments to the committee meeting. She's actually part of the CPA. Okay. Committee. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Shouldn't be in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Pat, did you have a last thing to say? I, I just had, had one thought. I, I know, Rebecca, you've broken it down to masonry and roofing, but, but it seems to me in projects that I've done, when you're looking at scaffolding and you're looking at a leaking roof and needing to protect the chimneys with the roofing, that maybe it needs to be separated to the roof and the chimneys yeah. and then the, the lower masonry. Yeah. And I don't know whether that's a possibility and how, how that would add to the cost. But um, if the scaffolding is there for the roofing, it would also be there for the use of the mason for the chimneys. Mm -hmm. And then that would take care of that issue. And then to address the, the lower part of the building, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's basically more specifically stating what we alluded to earlier. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Happened before the yeah. Yeah, I understand. Oh, and regarding the last, um, the last slide with uh, Tamara Conde, what is the process for 
getting that money or not getting it. Um, that you'll work directly with Ben. Um, okay. That because it's already it's already in the bank, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and we can allocate it, but it has nothing to do with your CPA proposal. Right. Right. I know that's separate. So I'll just work through Ben. Okay. Is that good? Right. Ben? Yeah, I think um, maybe we'll come back to the commission at a later date just to look at that proposal more closely. Um, I guess it was a bit more than I was expecting um, because we have $25,000 for like all the inventory work that we want to yeah, do. I was wondering what you um, took well in by. I think it was a smaller amount. I was surprised. But yeah, I mean, obviously it's, a, it's an important, it's a really important uh, burial ground for the town. And, um, you know, I think we were, in my mind, we were waiting for the preservation plan to be finished which is going to take another year to kind of figure out what we're going to do with the for inventory work on a townwide scale. But now, you know, like Jan said, we're, the money is in the bank now. So I thought, all right, here's this great project that, you know, is, is inventorying a historic resource in town. And I thought we could allocate some funds uh, for that effort. But um, I guess I just wasn't expecting the full twenty five thousand. Yeah. Sorry if that was a misunderstanding. No, that, that you um, threw that number out. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. um, Tamara can scale back. You know yeah. the number of stones that she uh, would inventory. That would that's where that number is flexible, and um, she has someone in mind to do the house. But you know, so okay. that's sort of up in the air right now. Okay, um, and yeah, I guess let's just touch base soon because I think, you know, to really just get, if the goal is really just to get on MACRIS, which is the state, you know, inventory, you know, I think that requires a certain level of documentation and, and you know, narrative, but I don't know if every, you know, uh, stones need to be inventoried at a, you know, very detailed level. I think it's, it's, I might be wrong. Burial grounds might be different, but I'm I'm most familiar with building inventories, and it's you know it's a few sentences really. But I think for a for a historic landscape like this, you know, a full fleshed out narrative would be appropriate and uh, and yeah, a decent yes. documentation. But um, yeah, yeah, I I was wondering if I had misunderstood you or misremembered numbers because I thought you were talking about a small fraction of the twenty five thousand, yeah. and then and then she said the full. Um, do we get reef? Do we does that re, get rebuilt every year, or where's that money coming from? Yeah, so that that was from uh, fiscal year twenty twenty one. So we applied for it in twenty twenty, I, I guess. We um, applied for it. Yeah, I don't I don't really remember. I guess maybe it was a Nate Nate project, but um, okay. yeah, that's you know we can always you know submit an, an, another application for next year or something. So yeah, okay, great. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we'd like to keep some of it then. I didn't realize what how the numbers had changed yeah. uh, for tonight. So, okay, okay. We'll work with him. Um, okay, that yeah. sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. I think there's some flexibility. You know, that was a number that you told me, and so yeah, we went yeah. with it. Uh, but we can certainly go back to the drawing board if you give me another number. Okay. <laughs> and, um, yeah, good. Okay, thank you all so much and come and come and visit the cemetery anytime. Great, we will. All right. Okay. Uh, so is Gigi here for Amherst Historical Society? Yeah, Gigi is here. And uh, just uh, for the other attendees in the room for a Seek Young talk, uh, we'll we'll get to the uh, North Amherst Church uh, next on the agenda after the Amherst Historical Society. So I'll bring in Gigi here. Okay. Hi, Gigi. Hi, Jan. How are you? Uh, um, this, I, I'm with you tonight just to let you know what we're planning to apply for. And I don't have photographs of what we're, what we're proposing. Um, but this past summer, we had a, a funds to hire a, a short-term curator, Diana Lempel, who came very highly recommended. And among the things that she was charged to do was to reconsider the exhibitions in the historical society's building. 
And she became very captivated, as many people are, with Mabel Loomis Todd. And she um, is, has crafted an exhibition narrative that really focuses on Mabel's love of nature and her skills as an artist. And some of you may have seen the uh, folding screens that Mabel did. Um, I feel like I know her so well, I'm gonna call her Mabel. Um, and those are, in, those are in fine condition. It turns out, however, that up in storage were five more, well, four more panels, and then also a rectangular painting. Um, two of the five have been framed in the past, but all need um, some serious conservation from a paintings conservator. And we're in the process now of getting a quote for this work um, from Michelson's gallery. And we'll have it by the end of, um, you know, in time, I hope for the uh, proposal. Um, so basically we'll be asking for uh, funds to conserve five paintings that um, certainly are done by a local celebrity and focus on um, Mabel Loomis Todd's love of nature and her skills as an artist. But I, I have to admit the paintings are in, a uh, couple are in okay condition, but some have a lot of losses that would require in painting. Uh, some have come off their stretchers and there will be some uh, careful attention made to extending the canvases so that they'll go around the stretchers and will be secure and safe and stabilized for another century. These were done in the late 19th century and clearly nothing's been done to them. So basically it's a very simple project. I, I hesitate to you know throw a number out, but um, it, I can't imagine even with the framing that it would be more than three to $4,000 a panel, if that. And that includes the panel that's already out, the two extra and the rectangular painting, or how, how many, three to 4,000 on how many? Oh, for five, for five. five. Oh, yeah. for the five, okay. Yeah, for the five. Okay. And they will look splendid. Um, Diana's become an avid reader of Emily Dickinson's poetry. And one of the panels um, is of hollyhocks and it's absolutely gorgeous and uh, Diana, just this past week found by reading some poetry that yes, there is one devoted to hollyhocks. So anyway, it'll, these paintings have a wonderful tie to the community, of course, and will mm -hmm. just be eye-catching and pretty fabulous. So if you want, I can come back in October with the full proposal and we can go over it then. Uh, but you I just, will when, when, once it's submitted, you'll be asked to. Okay, it. so, yeah. but I just wanted to let you know what we're up to. Last year, we had a grant um, to do some uh, do a structural engineering report on the uh, Simeon Stronghouse. And that has been completed. And although the engineer found a lot that needs to be done, there's nothing that is that endangers the structure at this point. And um, so I was kind of waiting to see what Jake Smith would come up with. And so we don't really have to do anything immediate to the structure. So okay. we will probably do some careful crafting of a large project farther down the road. But right now, five paintings, we'd love to get them done and they'll look wonderful and you'll be proud okay, of them. Thank you. Okay. Um, Robin, do you have a question? Oh. Robin? Yep. Um, yeah, hi, can you hear me? Sure. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, what a great project. Um, what an interesting thing to come before the CPA, um, a, a shift, to, shift away from buildings. Yes. Um, like <laughs> no a nice uh, interlude. Um, I'm sure that the, the photographs will make the presentation even more impactful. Um, I think as part of the CPA regulations, the Historical Commission will need to write a letter of Affirming these paintings as historic resources, as if you meant more historic resources. It's just the, one of the requirements. If you're not on the National Historic Register if you're dealing with artifacts. Um, it requires uh, just a confirmation from our commission. So um, we can put that on our 
to-do list. And then I just had a question because I was on the CPA. Um, I wasn't on this last year, but I was on for the three years prior to that. And I'm remembering that at some point there were outstanding CPA grants from the Historical Society, I believe. And I guess this is more of a question for Ben, if there are any grants outstanding or if things have been closed out since that mm -hmm. time period. I know we, we had a whole we, bunch of things. Yeah. We closed those all out. Good. Great. That's great. Yeah, that, was, that was terrible to let them linger. Yeah. But it, yeah, my understanding is the, the only one is the uh, from last year is the uh, structural right. report. So that's the, that just uh, just that standard or just that is in available. So. Right. So and that the, the report is basically done. We don't have the full report yet, but the work on it's been done. And we had a preliminary letter that uh, stated we're not going to fall apart. And so we'll see. But farther down the road, there are there's roofing problems. So we'll we'll be back with <laughs> and some structural timber issues and rotted sills. So there's some big deficits there. Okay, great. Anyone else have a comment or question for Gigi? Oh, Ben? Yeah, I just had a quick question. I, I may have missed when you said this, but um, will the paintings be displayed publicly after once they're- Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, it's absolutely. Yeah, because the Mabel, Mabel Loomis Todd room, um, it, they'll, it, it'll be a permanent installation. And I think the paintings will be so beautiful that um, we'll probably move them around in the house um, just for variety's sake, but um, they'll be quite gorgeous and yet available for the public. Robin, is your hand just still up or did you have something else to say? Just forgot to take it down. We'll do that okay. now. Okay, I just, I'm never sure. <laughs> okay, great. So if there's no other comments, we'll just thank you and wait to see the full proposal with pictures. Yeah, yeah, you'll get that. Okay. Thank you Thanks, all for your work. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will leave you now. Okay, we're on to the North Amherst Church uh, building. We've already talked to them once. What's uh, what are we doing today? This is um, I hope hearing an update just on uh, you know conversations they've had with contractors. Okay. And uh, you know maybe a more refined scope of work. Okay, well, we can take a brief update. And uh, trying to promote CPM to panelists. Hello, Sik Young. Uh, are you with us? Hello. Hello, there you are. Oh, okay, good. Well, I uh, since our first two meeting, August four. We have some uh, progress just been mentioned mm -hmm. and want to update you on it. Uh, what I mean by progress, I will explain in a couple of minutes. The historical commission recommended lease getting a three different estimate from general contractors. Mm -hmm. And while we are trying to accomplish, one of the contractor noticed the leak which we all anticipated from previous image everybody saw. And also our suspicion was correct. The roof facing the Pine Street, some portion of it caved in. And one of the contractors said he cannot give an estimate in that condition. We must hire structural engineer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's why we call Kuhn and Riddle Architects in Amherst. Uh, they came out last Wednesday. 
uh, one of the architect, Chris Foley, and Jonathan Salvador. I could be wrong with the Jonathan last name, but anyway, Chris Foley went up to a roof and confirmed the structural issue and needed to call engineer. So of course, um, they are and we are aware of pressing for time. However, uh, we all know this matter needs the time to assess the problem beneath the surface. So I don't know that uh, if an engineer can establish what we need to know within the time frame, but we are trying and they are trying. And so my question is, um, progress meaning is confirming our suspicion and uh, what we anticipated. Uh, however, uh, if we could submit the application itself by the September 30th, but if engineer report and general contractors estimate could it be come in after the August 30th? That's the question I like to ask. Mm -hmm. And if not, then you have, a, I am welcome to suggestion what we should do. Uh, that's why I'm here to okay. share this uh, progress so-called. Yeah. Great, that's, not, that's a really positive word to use for a setback. <laughs> <laughs> like your attitude. Um, Robin, your hand is up. Do you have a suggestion since will she be I able do. to do it? Well, I have a couple of comments. The first thing I wanted to say um, is sort of for um, Sikyun's ears and Ben's ears. I, I know from my research that the MHC has emergency stabilization funds that are off grant cycle. And I don't know if that I have the right connections or the capacity to connect with them to find out that this property would be um, a good person to at least start making that connection. If we're talking about actual roof failure, um, mm -hmm. um, that would be that would be the first thing. So I could maybe have an email with Ben and Sikyung after this meeting. Um, okay. And then the second thing, I think the CPC is pretty, um, I think we have in the past uh, heard presentations from um, applications where some financial statements were outstanding at the time of application. Obviously, we want permanent uh, fixed numbers by the time of proposal review, but I think particularly given what sounds like the somewhat precarious position of the building, um, submitting with what you have and just putting a note in to explain any um, contingencies uh, would be fine and encouraged. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for that and information. We had talked when you were with us last time about breaking the work into different um, years. Um, yes. And um, it, was the roof going to be one of the very first things anyway? Correct, yes. Okay, so maybe if um, if that could be this year's proposal and this yes. is all kind of tied together, mm -hmm. um, it might make sense that you had to have this done, but you will be coming in with these numbers. You know, it's not like it's a completely separate issue. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Okay, we try to prioritize like a, uh, first meeting that you mentioned. So right. that's what we're trying to do. Yes, yeah, so we don't ask yeah. you too much at once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you but for I, that. Yeah, Jan and Sigan, I, I don't know if the architects can help. Um, I'm not sure who's helping um, kind of, you know, help helping you phase out the project appropriately from a, from a structural standpoint, but I'd recommend that too, if you can get a professional opinion on um, how things should be phased, that'd be helpful. Yes, I am. Uh, it's a Kuhn and Riddle architect firm in downtown Main Street. Uh, one of the architect is a Chris Foley. So and, they're great. Yeah. They're looking at the whole thing and telling you what's the most necessary right now. They're, they're giving you those priorities. Yes, I told them that we had a meeting with the historical commission, told us that prioritize what is the ASP is needed. So obviously the so roof is leaking 
is, but however, when they look at it, uh, SAG, little bit portion of it, uh, so need a structure engineer, they're trying to get in touch with the structure engineer ASAP. And so that's what I know, that's where we stand. And that's what you know now, so. Great, perfect. That, that sounds great, yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Thank Anyone you for encouraging me. questions <laughs> or comments? Anyone else on the commission want to add anything? It sounds like you're handling it as best we can imagine at this point. Okay. So just that's a good sign. Must be I'm doing good then. <laughs> Thank good you. Though. Thank you so much. Thank you okay. for letting us know. Good luck. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Good night, everybody. Night. Uh, okay. So Robin, you're up next. I'm up. Um Okay, so I sent my, inspiration. Yeah, sent my thoughts to everybody. Yes. Um, as I mentioned in my letter, I'm, I'm uh, killing two birds with one stone by focusing my community, community preservation project for my uh, graduate coursework on barn preservation and stabilization and survey work. Mm -hmm. um, and after I took a look at our region's uh, different types of barn programs and thought a lot about who owns barns in Amherst and looked at who gets awards in Vermont. And um, I, I decided uh, for two reasons. One, that we don't have a particular, that, that, the, that the buildings that we're worried about being threatened tend to be just kind of sitting there. They're not owned by farmers um, or you know CSAs or things like that. Um, the second idea being that um, uh, anybody can always come forward for a CPA grant for funding. So we, unlike a lot of states, we have a funding mechanism that anybody who's in need can use, um, can access pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. But what we don't have is a program that other states do have or do in one way or in another is to provide um, an assessment process for anybody with an outbuilding or, or barn, um, barn being an outbuilding, um, to get a relatively uh, quick understanding of their structure, uh, what's wrong with it, what it would take to fix it, and how it might be adapted and, and, and what that would cost. And that seems to me um, to be the best fit for our community. I and mean, then the other factor is that administering uh, an actual preservation program really, you know, from all these other states, it really takes dedicated paid staff. Um, and I think what we really want is to get people who have these properties um, interested in the idea of preserving them and giving them the starting block. Like I think of this as the starting block that you really can't go for a real preservation project if you don't know what you're up against. The biggest issue which I outlined in my um, letter is that the CPA eligibility for funding has this very strange um, part before the horse construction where you have to have a proposal before, and this is, this is the Department of Revenue guidelines, you have to have a proposal before the committee in order to get funding for a feasibility study, which seems kind of strange since how would you know what your project would be if you hadn't done an assessment or a feasibility study. So I think since both those pieces of the language are in there that maybe the town can, uh, so this is sort of pointed at Ben, maybe the town can agree that this is something we could go forward with. And if that's the case, I could start to look together to get a roster of um, individuals who could actually provide assessments in a timely manner, um, talking to these other states and how their programs work so that we could begin to develop something simple that would be like a flyer to everybody on our outbuilding survey list and then something to hand anybody who comes before us for demolition request that this program is available to assess your building. You know, um, New Hampshire does like a $400 match on a $500 fee um, and, uh, and then we could go from there. So that's, it's not a CPA proposal at this point, but it's a proposal to figure out from the town how we can find a way to use these CPA funds for that purpose. 
Um, okay. So so but the, the CPA funds, I mean, they're administered, they're technically administrative funds. Wait, you mean the funds that we would get would be administered? No, CPA, CPA has two funding pots. They have the project right. funding oh, oh, and okay, they have administrative okay. funds. Right, so right, it right. would be from the administrative uh, line item. Yeah, there. yeah, okay. Um, great. Um, I, I think you did a really nice job of looking critically at the whole situation and coming up with an interesting way to start. Um, everybody has had a chance to read that, and now you've heard her presented. Were there um, specific questions or comments or suggestions for Robin? Ben, how did it start? I'll jump in. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate um, the work and thought that you put into it, Robin. It's, uh, I think backing off from the physical repairs at this point is makes sense it's it's a lot to, to administer and to, and to manage i think um but so i guess i've always been a little bit unclear about how the cpa admin funds work i um you know i know we've had this conversation in the past about um using them for various reasons whether it's you know assessments and whatnot or signage even um but I guess why not do this as a CPA proposal for historic preservation? Call it, you know, do like, uh, say it's like a pilot project and use the funds for assessments of um, barns, uh, you know, upon request by, by homeowners. I guess that seems more. Just, just knowing that the town's never really used admin funds for anything creative like this, there might be some resistance to doing something new, but I don't think it's that, wouldn't be that big of a stretch for people to, or for the town council and CPA committee to use, allocate historic preservation CPA funds for this type of project. But aren't there, isn't it more likely one could get the administrative funds because they aren't asked for as often and the others, there's never enough, right? Um, well, I think they have, you know, there's, there's a very small pot of admin funds. I think it's like 5% or something of the total grant. And that's usually used to, for like legal, for administering, for literally administering the CPA grant. So I just know they, they've never, I, I totally hear what you're saying, Robin, by look, finding that DOR guidance and saying, look, the admin funds can be used for this, but I just worry people are going to. Kind of just be nervous about that or do trying something new, but you know, maybe okay. I mean, job, I think you know, I, I'm basically hitting the barn preservation assessment ball into the core of the town. Yeah, when I look at that guidance, it looks like you know, if you from a fiscal perspective, we should be spending it out of the administrative pot, doesn't mm -hmm. matter to me, like. It looks like it's not eligible under project funds. And I just wouldn't want to put the effort in. First of all, I wouldn't yeah. want to have to put the effort into a proposal if a proposal isn't necessary because administration and administrative funds are just at the discretion of the town, right? Like town council doesn't have to approve administrative yeah. funds. I mean, that would be my first question. Less work, um, you know, faster turnaround and, you know, no proposal cycle or now, I don't know how we would manage something like that. Um, okay. I mean, well, maybe it's I'm worth talking to. to, to uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that's my question is sort of like, how does the town want to handle it? And if they really want us to put in a proposal, then I can try to bang one out in time. <laughs> but um, either way, totally fine with me. I just don't want to write a proposal, get to CPC and know. have, yeah, you know, know, somebody on the town side say, or, you know, another one of the committee members um, say, I don't, you know, I don't think that this is an eligible project. And then, you know, then we're back to square one. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah we also don't want to get into a situation where the council decides that everybody who applies has to come before the council. Right. It right. has to be a much simpler process. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, why don't I... Um reach out, I guess ultimately it's like the finance accounting department that would mm -hmm. yeah. make the ruling about the use of admin funds. So I can yeah. reach out to, to folks there. 
Yeah. I mean, either way, however they want us to spin it, I'm mm -hmm. I'm happy to do it that way. I think it's a great, uh, and you know, then the, like I said, the next step is really, you know, I would need to find um, people who can actually do the assessments. So I'd yeah. be willing to commit to that, you know, creating a roster of those people so that we could um, we could get started on it. Yeah, we've used a couple in the past ourselves already. So yep. yeah. Um, that sounds good. Can you um, talk to somebody in finance relatively quickly this this week or the beginning of next? Because if we do, if they do want a proposal, we don't have much time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can get on that. Okay. Although, Robin, you've put a lot together. I mean, I don't think it would be hard to, to do it, but yeah. it's just more on your plate, you know, at this point. Yeah. yeah. And if, if, I mean, the other question is if they do want a proposal, I just need a, a dollar figure to ask for. I don't know. We could ask for like, I guess, 10,000. I mean, that if you had a thousand dollars in assessment, which is on the high end, that would be 10. I don't, I don't imagine like people are going to be beating down our door to get their buildings assessed. So. You think a thousand is enough? The, the, and this is, you know, this is why I'm, I chose this project for my coursework. Um, I'm working with New Hampshire. They pay somebody 500. Okay. Um, they have many grants that are only 250, which are a much shorter report. Um, and then Rhode Island, remember. I saw, Rhode, Rhode Island, I saw 1500. Yeah, I so saw I the get, numbers you had. I just, I remember doing the one up, um, that barn on um, Montague Road, remember at the corner of Plum yes, Street? Yep. And we had White Oak Timber do it. And yep. I, I thought we paid more. Do you remember? Okay. I thought it was like 1500 or something, but maybe I'm um, really wrong. I'm not sure. Well, I think I'm happy to do the legwork to, you know, shop around and find, I mean, find people who are willing to do things in a timely manner. There's no point. Having a program if you can't get anybody to actually do it for a right. decent amount of money. But or um, we know there's yeah, one but person in the area who comes out and looks at it all, but then never provides a report. So yeah, right. they don't get on our list. <laughs> yeah. No. But even if it was, even if we said two thousand, you know, ten thousand dollars would get us five assessments in one year. I mean, that seems like yeah, a reasonable number. Good. If we have to go the proposal route, which I'm hoping that we don't. Yeah, and it's not scary. It shouldn't scare the town off. Yeah. Okay. Well, does that sound like a good plan, Ben? You'll find out a little more from finance and get back. Yeah. Yeah. Making it out. Yeah. Maybe you could just email Robin and me, and we can think about what the next step is. Because so, this is our last meeting before the deadline, right? So yeah. we're just. That's <laughs> correct. Yeah. I know where we stand here before we leave. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on that one? You're all kind of quiet tonight. Good job, Robin. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Okay, um, this moves us to number two on the agenda, which is the preservation plan update and next steps that you all probably saw on page five, phase two. Um, ben and um, Shannon have proposed talking to all sorts of people um, to get their input on um, town preservation. And Ben, you were mostly wanting to know if your list made sense, if there's a order in which they should go, right? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm happy to uh, touch base about this at next meeting only because I talked to Shannon um, yesterday on the phone and she's going to just develop a, a few things um, probably by next week, which is like an actual like draft of a survey um, that we would put out to the public and then a kind of like a list of like questions that we would use uh, at these kind of focus group meetings right you know with the planning board and town staff and other stakeholders so it doesn't seem like there's much to you know we could we could talk about strategy and stuff right now but I think it might be more straightforward if we have something okay. to respond to for and maybe also in that is um, the order in which people would be um, addressed. Yeah, yeah. I remember you and I talked a little bit about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Taking things up the chain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense to talk to the town council first, like you know, or right. the town manager first. Bring them. Yeah. People said, yeah. yeah so no. we can. We're basically tabling it, or we're just pushing it on to the. We haven't really started it. We're just pushing it on to next. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I think 
Sorry, cat tail in the way. Okay. Um, okay, then we'll put it on the agenda for next month. Um, Becky, you had brought up the web page uh, meeting updating. They always do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think um, I, I had laid it out in that email, so I don't yes. know. Um, I mean, it's just a matter of it. It, it is written as if the, the 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 people who came here and settled were the farmers. Right. And it, when in reality, the, the indigenous people were farming the land uh, mm -hmm. a lot. And, and I, I just wanted to give a nod to um, expanding the story a little bit. Absolutely. I think that, that's been a big update for a lot of people on their presentations as we're starting to understand um, yeah. where we've gone wrong here and what is missing. So. Anybody have any comments on that? Um, Madeline, did you have a chance to see that? You weren't on the email trail yet. Um, concerning the website? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I received that. Okay, I guess. Um, she wasn't, she wasn't with us. Okay, well, maybe you can, um, Ben, you can forward her. Uh, well, one thing that got missed. It's basically just, the description of the history of the town doesn't include the first indigenous set, um, residents. Yeah, which, okay, Pat, you have a comment? I do, I thank Becky for her diligence. Um, if we're talking about history, we have to include all of the peoples who inhabited Amherst. And um, it, it's, in my opinion, it's necessary to do that as a proper timeline and acknowledge um, that that this was a agricultural area before the British claimed it, and whoever else claimed it with the Brits. Um, so I'm I'm fully in favor of making a modification that would be significantly uh, uh, honor that timeline. Great, thank you, Robin. Robin? Yep, just uh, full full support, incredibly important and timely update. Thank you, Becky. So are you going to provide wording and then Brianna can add it or how are we going to do this? Uh, so I, I have access to edit the website. Um, oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, I, I manage it. So um, Becky, yeah, I'm looking through the email now. Sorry, when it came through, I was kind of just getting back from vacation and didn't have okay. a full chance to read it, but is there, could you propose language in here or just kind of point it out um, some things that need clarification or is, can I work with you um, to? Yeah, I had, it was, it was the, the two parts that said, Amherst was not always an agricultural community. It begins that way. Right, okay. Um, so I think inserting that in fact it was, and maybe meeting some of those folks that, that farm here and, and live here and then saying and then, you mm. know. But, right. but you gotta be careful. You have to be really careful because there's so much new research and you know, um, the colonists allegedly purchased the land. Um, they didn't purchase the land, they purchased the rights to it with wampum. And for the indigenous people, you know, being paid wampum meant that there was an honor system going on, that the colonists were going to allow the indigenous people to continue to use the land in the way that they they wanted to. And boy, they did not. They just moved in and they, you know, they plowed and they put their own stuff in and they didn't do things and really cut people out. But I, you don't want to get into that on the website, I, I don't think. Um, so just no. a nod maybe with, with more of the truth of who is here first. Awesome. Yeah, could you maybe draft a few things and you can either maybe ben oh, can send it yeah. to us and we can look at it. And then once everybody agrees on the wording, he can add this back into the text. Would that be, would that work? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it, it's send some, there. So yeah, it, it's good. Okay, just send it to Ben. Don't send it to us, right? And then no, he sends it out to us. It's so confusing that that's how it has to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. When I sent it out, I really was just looking for who do I talk with. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it was said, so. <laughs> okay, I can do that. That, oh. that one. Great, okay. I'm glad you caught that. Thank you. I haven't looked at our web page, so I haven't really paid attention. Well, I want to Oh, no, I'm sorry. I just wanted to give credit to the author of, of the um, essay and the, who, who did the research. Mm-hmm. And she actually mentioned, oh, the Amherst Town website says this. I went, what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it would be nice to change it. And I think I might let her know um, awesome. that we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and on the agenda, Ben, you had Historical Commission webpage. It's the town webpage. Oh, okay. Uh, Robin, you had a comment? Oh yeah, I was just wondering, I mean, I don't want to complicate things too much, but if there was any uh, representative from a native community representative that we wanted to confer with at all, just to um, kind of fully vet whatever our statement is, just a suggestion. That's a good one. I, I would not know. I know that the scholar who did the work um, has done quite a lot of research this is just uh i mean maybe she knows the form i don't is know is she here at umass who are you talking about it is um lisa brooks she's done some talks at the historical museum written lots about us uh, and Philip wars and some of the other um indigenous people and their involvement with with the mm-hmm. colonists yeah, she teaches at Amherst College, I believe. So she's a faculty oh, member. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe loop her in to this and just tell her what we're doing. Okay. And, um, I will do that. We can be sure we don't do any faux pas. Um, Robin, does that sound okay? Robin? I think we lost her. Yeah, I can do that though. That that'll be fun. So you know. Great. Okay. Great. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> that, no, I think that's a great, I think it's a great plan. I just, I know that there's, you know, that the, the, what we are reminded of rightly uh, very often is to, um, to seek non-white voices when talking about non-white issues. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, we'll check with um, Brooke's sources and go from there. Okay. I'll let you guys know. Thanks. Okay, we're at the point now of public comment. So is there anyone waiting in the wings to make any comments, Ben? Uh, nope. It doesn't appear so. Okay, so then um, we have items not anticipated within 48 hours of the meeting. Anybody have anything they want to bring? Mm-hmm. Um, I would just say that the, uh, yeah, we finished our contract with the, uh, uh, contractors at uh, West Cemetery. So they, uh, we had $100,000 total and they they did basically that, you know, as much work as we had initially allocated to cost 100,000 only for like $42,000, hmm. which is great. And then part of their work, if you remember, we talked about this, part of their work was like assessing the rest of the stones that need work and to give us an idea of what like phase two would look like. So now that we still have like, you know, like 60, just shy of $60,000 left, we can hire, or we still have to put out an RFP and get three quotes, but you know, they came in the lowest last time. So we might just kind of continue that work and, and uh, there's a lot, a lot more work to do at West Cemetery, so. Great. I worked up there the other day to see what was happening with the trees and the new construction. Yeah. The archipelago building, cause you know, I and the rep to, yeah. Um, design review board, Becky, when this building was being considered, and I really fought them on the the small setback. They wanted ten feet, and they wanted five feet, and I wanted twenty feet, and I wanted to save the trees, and it was it was a huge mess. But ultimately, all the trees came down. I mean, they're they're just gone now, and I just wanted to see how things looked. But I happened to notice because I was looking at the west and the south sides of the cemetery. They the headstones look really good. They have done a lot of work. It's looking a lot better than it used to. It was really tawdry for a while when you walked in on that site. Um, and I, I, I'm glad, we, this is like three years we've had this going now with one year gap, I think. Um, but it's starting to show, so it's, it's good. Uh, okay, any announcements? 
you know, major change, life changes anybody wants to announce here on tape at the Historical Commission. <laughs> um, okay, next meeting date. Did we set that last time for October? Um, yeah. We're talking yeah, about October being tough. I think um, the, I have October 12th. Well, the Wednesday. night before I leave, yeah. Okay, is that still okay for everybody? Yep. October 12th, it is back to a Wednesday. It is the second Wednesday, which is kind of where we used to be. Um, so Madeline, you can kind of figure that. Um, okay. Of course, sometimes it's each semester things changes a little because if somebody's teaching or taking a class or something, their schedule changes. But we have tried to keep it as much as possible on the second, sometimes the third Wednesday, even though today's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> That's not significant. Um, okay, so, again. yeah, great. And then do we want to pick um, November and December or what do people feel? Are we ready to um, move into the holiday period? The one in November would be very early if we were doing the second Wednesday because November starts on a Tuesday. So. Uh, it would be the 9th or the 16th. Are people I am not in a good position to access my calendar, if you can hear me. Right, right. Okay, so uh, should we make it tentative or should we just wait till next month? Could we tentatively um, do the 16th? I'm okay with that. We can. I may have to um, fly out to Northern California and take care of my brother. So I may not be here, um, but. Um, it is not a good month for me as vice chair because I have I have a comprehensive exam like right around that day. Gosh, Robin, you couldn't just jump <laughs> in? Well, what about the ninth? Would that be a better time yeah. for you because you wouldn't be trying to prepare and take your exam? Okay. I think the ninth would be, it'd be better, yes, yeah. Okay. How would people feel about so We're talking that? November, yes, right, okay, yep. That's fine, that's good. Okay, I'm sorry, what? Um, so. No, November 9th. Yeah, is everybody good yeah. with that? I'm yeah. more likely to be here. I wouldn't probably have to leave yet if I do have to go, so. Madeline, Hetty, everybody good? Yeah, that with works. That? The ninth is good. good. Okay, well, let's put that down tentatively and then Robin can check her calendar. <laughs> um, and if we have to, we'll change it. Um, okay. Or it also might be, it might be a, a, a meeting that I could miss now that we have one more full member. Oh, yes. well, don't use Madeline you, Madeline. as well as you. <laughs> I'm That's, not using that as much because no, no, I'm no, no. thankful. I'm thankful that, that that will be my hardest month. Okay. So if I, yeah, if I'm, if I'm, we understand. <laughs> yes, right. We, understand. we have quorum. We have quorum anyway. <laughs> okay. We will. Right, great. And I know, um, yeah, next meeting, from what I understand, the, the architects for the library are going to come. Um, That's right. Un unless there's any further delays, but hopefully not. So. Uh, that'll take up a lot of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then we pushed up uh, the preservation plan. So it's two things, yeah, okay. Um, you, we, you know, realize this the whole meeting, we haven't had a reason for a motion to be made? Yeah. Yes, I think I've this might be the tried. first meeting I've ever been at. Oh, this didn't uh, happen. We can, we can mm -hmm. have a meeting to adjourn. Well, we can yeah. have a motion to adjourn. That's what I was Before. heading towards, Hetty. And I bet that you could be the first person to make a motion this can I, meeting. Can I, can I interrupt? I, sorry, sorry to Oh, wait, Ben has something else. <laughs> sorry, sorry, ben. sorry to lose the momentum. But I, I, I guess I, I did just remember. So if we have the library meeting next month, like I think next month is also when we would need to hear from like a CPA applicant. That's um, right. So, but if I remember correctly, like last year, we actually didn't like hear presentations from all of them. We kind of just, you know, maybe took, you know, maybe took like 45 minutes or something, but we kind of just had discussed each project and, and ranked them and prioritized them. And, you know, we, I don't. Okay, in the past, 
that's been two months apart. There's a month where people are available for our questions. And sometimes people do presentations, but I'm going to ask us to skip that. That's what the proposal's for. Yeah. They're there for us to ask further questions. And then the following month, we prioritize. But now if that's if there isn't enough time to separate them that way, mm. then we may have to use the November meeting. Right. Uh, I, can you hear me, Jan? Yeah. yeah. When are you going to have to take our list in? It's uh, the CPA meetings start early in November. Um, Ooh. Like, I think the ninth is maybe the, or I'm not sure what day it is, but the, maybe the first full week of November. So, I mean, Ben can, maybe Ben can take a look at the, the schedule, but I'm pretty sure that October is, because they've submitted, right? They've submitted in September. Mm -hmm. Right, so October would make sense that that would be the meeting for the historical commission. Yeah. yeah okay. And well, then November, we're in we're in CPA is meeting and we're in in the weeds. Okay, so October's meeting is going to be big. Um, I would suggest two things. One is that you tell the architects we need everything before the meeting from them. Yeah. You know, we yeah. need we need to be able to read it all, see it all, and and they're only there for questions because I don't want one of these long PowerPoints that takes forty minutes to get through. Okay, yeah, and if I I did um you know in preparation for actually last month's meeting, I went through the whole like eighty pages of the mm -hmm. and made notes on kind of what awesome. what to pay, what to pay attention to and and what kind of historical resources are being potentially. Um, altered and stuff. So I, I hope that I hope that yeah, you had pointed some keep, things out for us to pay attention to. Keep already. focused on that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can do that for us and give us everything to look at in advance, and if we're all ready, we don't have to extend the meeting, however much longer that would yeah. take. Yeah. CPA um, people there for questions one at a time. We'll have read the proposals. We'll have everything in front of us. Um, preservation plan, uh, she can send us that in advance. And mm -hmm. again, it'll just be if we have any questions or suggestions for her very briefly. Right. Because um, otherwise, this is going to be another one of our three, three and a half hour meetings. And, yeah. And, uh, and just trying to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, pray we don't get a demolition application. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Let's hope we don't get a demolition application or more. Um, Okay, yeah, so everybody do your homework and it'll save a lot of time at the meeting and um, we can be super efficient. Speaking of which, it's only been an hour and 40 minutes and Hetty is going to... Make a motion that we adjourn tonight. She has moved that we adjourn. Has anyone liked to second her movement? Second. Oh, I would. <laughs> and Pat and Becky are both seconding and thirding. So everyone in favor of adjournment. It was lovely seeing you all, by the way. Yes. Thank you, right. thank you Jan. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank great. You. It passes uh, unanimously. Bye, bye, everyone. Take care. Thanks for coming. Bye, bye. Thank you. Soon.